Hello everyone, my name is Jody Gordon Lucas and I am the designer of the Serendipity Cardigan and the Serendipity Pullover. And this is a knit along that I've put together to uh, support everyone in the process of making these garments. And before I go another sentence further in this knit along, I need to thank everyone for their purchase of my pattern. I'm an independent designer and your purchase is supporting me directly, so thank you very much. Alright, so you have joined us having purchased uh, the pattern for either the cardigan or the pullover, so you know which of these garments you're going to make. And the pattern is a new direction for me. Um, this is a, a recipe. And you can use any weight of yarn um, from fingering to bulky and you can make it to basically any bust size. Uh, the pattern is divided into decisions and steps. So what do you need to decide? What do you need to act on? And we're going to get started by discussing decision one. And that is what size do you want to make? So you begin by measuring your bust, and I'm going to be making, throughout the knit-along, I'm going to be making the samples that you'll see actually pictured in your pattern. And um, as um, an independent designer with knit picks, I am making my garment to fit their models, and our guideline is to make a 34 to 36 inch, 34 to 36 inch bust, which happens to be the size of Gertie here. So I am shooting for a, I, my bust measurement, my actual bust measurement is going to be 36 inches. But that isn't necessarily the size of the garment I'm going to make. I need to decide how much ease I'm going to add to that. And in their pattern you will see a, a little um, box that says how easy am I? And it's going to describe um, different types of fit and the amount of ease, the, num the amount of inches you need to add to create that fit. Um, as we are working this, I'm going to be making both the pullover and the cardigan, and I have decided for my cardigan that I want to take my 36 inch bust and I'm going to add 2 inches to that. And then I'm going to take um, the same 36 inch bust for the pullover and I'm not going to add any ease to that. I want it to be a very close fitting garment. Okay, so that's the bust measurement I'm shooting for. I'm shooting, shooting for 36 inches for the pullover and um, 38 to 40 inches for the cardigan. Okay, so you've got the size that you're shooting for. Your next decision that you need to make is yarn. And as I said, this is going to be a part of the of Knitpicks Independent Designers Program, and they have provided yarn support for this. Thank you, Knitpicks. And the cardigan, cardigan I'm going to make with this uh, Swish DK. Um, it's merino, and this is the cornmeal colorway. And the pullover I'm going to use gloss DK. This is the current colorway and this is I believe it's merino and silk. Alright so those are my yarn my yarn selections and um, if you when you are selecting yarn um, as I said you can use anything from fingering to bulky. You need to keep in mind if you're a very small woman you need to avoid the bulkier yarns. Um, it may not be possible to make a garment small enough for you with the bulky. The other thing that you need to keep in mind is um, Serendipity has some really beautiful lines that it creates um, with with uh, ribbing. So you would want to have uh, this is not this is not a place for boucle type of yarn. You want something that's going to show that texture. Decision number three is needles. You are going to want to select needles that go with your yarn and create a fabric that you're going to want to wear. You want something that's going to have a nice drape. Um, you don't want the the fabric to be too stiff. Um, on the same token, you don't want the fabric to be too open. You don't want it to be too see-through. All right, so we've made three decisions. We know what size we're going to shoot for, we know what yarn we're going to use, and we've got an idea of about the needle size that we're going to be working with. The next step is to swatch. And it's only really in swatching that we become come certain that we've got the right needle to go with our yarn. So um, that kind of goes with decision number three. So make a swatch. You're making a stockinette swatch and you want it to be approximately three to four inches in length. Um, it doesn't really matter how wide it is because for this garment you really don't need to know your stitch gauge. You're only going to be working with your row gauge. Let me say that again. You need to know your row gauge, not your stitch gauge, your row gauge. Um, you need to block your swatch and let it dry. Now when I say block I mean that you need to wash it and you need to wring the water out and then just let it dry naturally. You're not going to be putting a lot of uh, tension on this. You don't need to pin it. You don't need your blocking wires. Okay, so once you have your swatch and you've blocked it and you're happy with the fabric and you know your row gauge, you can determine what 
sizes it is possible for you to make with this yarn and needle combination. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. I completed swatches. I made two sets of swatches in each yarn. Uh, the front two I made with US number fours and the back two I made with US number fives. I would be happy with the fabric from either of these options. Um, the back two have row gauges of um, seven rows per inch. Uh, this has a row gauge of 7.66 rows per inch and this is 7.5 rows per inch. So now that I know my possible now that I have my row gauges, let me see what possible sizes I can come up with. Okay, so in your patterns, you should have a table that looks like this. It'll look a little bit better because it will be in color. I unfortunately do not have a color printer. Um, but along the side you will see round numbers and they will be coated with red, yellow, and green. These round numbers are possible rounds that you can end the back on. And it kind of makes sense that the more rounds, the bigger the back. The bigger the back, the bigger the size. Alright, so the, I, the ideal rounds to end on are green. And here I've got the round numbers that are green. Um, in Well, you'll be able to see them in green in your pattern are um, marked with arrows and they're 47 and 63. So in a perfect world I would be able to make something with 47 rounds or 63 rounds and um, that would be great. If I uh, can't do that the next best would be a yellow which would be 59 or 43 and the least best, still workable, but the least best would be a red round and here it's like 55 and 71. Alright, so at the top we have um, whole number row gauges. And I already told you that I had gauges that had a whole number seven rows per inch. So what we can do now is look down this column and see if there are any um, bus circumferences that will work for me. And what I see here is I've got a 39. Now remember with that cardigan I wanted to have a bust that was 38 to 40 inches. So I could make my garment um, 39 inches ending on round 55. Now round 55 is not an ideal place to end it, um, so I would like to look at some more options, but I do have a possibility here. Um, the next size smaller is 34 inches. That's going to be too small for the pullover. So I'm going to have to be doing some custom sizes. So right here I have places where you can work out your custom gauge sizes and I told you that we had one for the pullover that was 7.66 sorry that was for the cardigan and the pullover had a row gauge of 7.5 and those were both worked on US 4's. Okay so there is a worksheet that you can complete that will talk you through how to do um, your custom row gauges. So let's be first begin with the 7.66. That's my row gauge, 7.66. Alright, the column in the chart that is closest to my gauge is 8. Column 8 rows per inch. And the closest bust measurement in that column to the size I want, well I want um, I want to be about 39, so that would be round 63. Um, so that would be 39 inches and round 63. Can you see that okay? Alright, so you multiply your round number, which is 63, times 5, which gives 315. And then you divide that by your row gauge, which is 7.66. And that gives me a possible bus circumference of 41 inches. And then I come over here and enter it under 41, or under the round 63. Now that's a little bit too big still. So I want to try the next smallest option, which would be round 59. Alright, so it would be the round number 59 times 5 divided by my row gauge which is 7.66 and that gives me 38.5 inches and that's perfect. I want to, if I were to use this row gauge, I would want to work to round 59 
that's a little bit better than um, round 55. So that is a that is a possibility for me. Okay. So now I need to figure out which round I'm going to work my pullover to. And I definitely do not have the measurement I want here. So going back to the worksheet, the, the closest measurement I can come to in eight rows per inch would be on, how let's call it round 59. Okay. And so 59 times five divided by 7.5. All right, 39.3, that's still a little bit bigger than I want. Let's try the next round smaller. Okay, and that is 55 times five, and then divided by 7.5. And that's 36.7, that is what I want to use for my pullover. At this point, I now have everything I need to plan my back for both the pullover and the cardigan. So let's begin with the pullover and I'm going to find um, this part of the pattern, my plan for the back. All right, and we're going to begin, as I said, with the pullover. All right, my needle size is four and my block row gauge is 7.66 rows per inch. And I am going to work to round 59 and I need to, just to make it easier to know when to stop, I am going to have 30 stitches in each repeat. When I'm done and my finished measurement is 38.5 inches. All right, now let's do the same thing for the pullover. Again, my needle size is four. My blocked gauge is 7.5. I'm going to work to round 55. And at round 55, I have 28 stitches for every repeat. And my finished bust estimate will be 36.7 inches. And now I can refer to this table when I am working to the back. I don't have to go look at the original data at all. I have a plan. So it's time for me to get started making the back of both of my garments. Um, there's one little trick I need to show you to make the center of the back just perfect. Uh, but other than that, you can follow either the written directions or the charts. Just work to your round. And uh, I'll show you that little trick here real quick. Here are eight stitches that I've cast on with a backwards loop. This is my working yarn and this is my yarn tail. And what you do is you thread your yarn tail onto a tapestry needle. And it's a little bit easier. You can use either double points or a circular to get started. I prefer to use a circular um, because then I can slide my stitches down onto the cable, which gives me a little bit more room to work with. And then you come around to the beginning and under your working yarn. And then you fish the tapestry needle through all eight stitches. Okay. It's a little fiddly, just like that. Okay. Then you pull the yarn through. Do not tighten it. This is just going to have it threaded through that so that when you are finished working the back, you can then tug on this yarn tail and cinch these stitches down tight. You don't want to cinch them now. This is just getting you set up for later. And then you return your stitches back to your needle and work them as if that little insurance policy is not there. And it is just amazing how that one little tug can bring the stitches together at the center and look just perfect and crisp and wonderful. So there you go. Well, I've had a busy couple of days, but I finished the backs to both of my garments. This is my cardigan back, which I worked around 59, and this is my pullover back, which I worked around 55. And if you recall, neither round 55 nor 59 were colored green. Back when we were trying to figure out which size we were going to make, um, round 59 is yellow and round 55 is red. 
So this is a good time to talk about why is why are some rounds better to leave the back than others. And it has to do with the stitch count in the wedge that you're creating with each increase. If you can kind of see this triangular wedge that you're creating. The stitch pattern that's going to go either around the lower edge of the cardigan of the pullover or around the whole body for the cardigan has a repeat of four plus two. So what that means is you need to have an even number of stitches and it can't divide by four. So for yellow rounds, you are off by one stitch. For, for red rounds, you're off by two stitches. And all you need to do is work one more round where you are adjusting the stitch count in those wedges and the specific directions are in your pattern. These are my completed backs. I worked the round adjusting the stitch count in the wedges so that it'll accommodate the four plus two repeat of the edge pattern. Um, I've also worked the side tabs. I'll give you a little bit more detail on that in a moment. And then I've transferred all of my stitches to a very long lifeline. Now you want this lifeline to be very long because you're going to be cutting it and removing stitches um, out of order. And you need to be able to have enough slack to hold the remaining stitches. Um, the, the backs are, um, there is no top or bottom. It doesn't matter you know, what becomes the neck, what becomes the lower edge. And you don't need to worry about that pucker that happens because of the ribbing in the center. Once you wash that, it will settle out. Here's a bit more detail on the side tab. It's worked over one repeat, no increases or decreases. The first and final stitches are always knit, which give this garter stitch edge. That's where you're going to be picking up stitches later. To determine how many side tab rows you need to work, find this worksheet and fill it out. So for the cardigan, I worked to round 59. Do not count the adjustment round if you had to work one. You subtract 3, which leaves 56, and then divide it by 4, which is 14. So I'm going to work 14 rows for each side tab. And there will be a total of four side tabs throughout the piece, um, one on each side of the back and one on each side of the front. One final decision for the week, and that is how are you going to eventually assemble the sides of your garment? You need to decide now because it's going to affect how you finish your side tabs. I strongly recommend, if you can manage it, that you graft the two pieces together um, in pattern. But if you prefer, you can bind off and sew it together with mattress stitch, or you can work a three needle bind off but you have to make the decision, what are you up for? That's all I have for this week. Next week we're going to be doing the front, and happy knitting!